We're testing. Testing, one, two, three. This is the cat women show. <laughs> exactly. Cat ladies show. We've changed this. The focus is no longer going to be on music. It's going to be on cats. <laughs> oh my god. Muses and felines. Okay, this is our second episode. And today we're going to be talking about... What did we decide? Inspirations and influ influences and inspirations. Yes. That was actually such a common question that we decided to make it a whole topic. Yeah, we got a lot of questions about, you know, who our influences are and... You know, we just kind of decided that uh, we'll get the common, obvious influences out of the way and then talk about other things that might influence us that people may not have known about. When I was 11, I want to say, I discovered Extreme through my brother, Ethan Brosh. He's a great professional guitar player. And, um, you know, well, he, Ethan was the reason I wanted to play guitar. And Extreme, uh, their record, Porn and Graffiti, was the first guitar record that I was, like, heavily influenced by and, you know, wanted to uh, emulate, not realizing that that was going to take some work. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit of practice for that. <laughs> Just a little. Um, and then, you know, I, I got, you know, heavily into guitar music after that. Um, loved Iron Maiden and all those bands and hair metal and all those things and, you know, got into like a lot of the shrapnel guys and, you know, I got some of my biggest influences are Andy Timmons and Greg Howe and Guthrie Gutten and Steve Lukather and Dan Huff. There's just too many to name, but you know, uh, I think the obvious ones I think I've kind of worn uh, on my sleeve mm -hmm. in previous years. So, you know, sorry if I forgot anybody, but what about you, Gretchen? My influences. Okay, so I first decided I wanted to pick up a guitar um, when I saw Eric Johnson play. And I love Eric. I do too. And like a lot of people, uh, Cliffs of Dover was what I was like, oh, that's the most joyous sound I've ever heard. <laughs> you know what? It's actually not my favorite Eric Johnson tune. Is it? What's your favorite? Manhattan. Manhattan's right, oh, too. Oh, I love yeah. it so much. It is. Maybe my biggest and most enduring influence was Steve Morris. And it was, I remember still seeing in this, it was a magazine uh, that came out and it's in the first, God, I wish I could find it because the, the sentence was something, it was a picture of Steve Morris who, to me, just looked like such like a, just a... Like, at a time when, when, you know, Eric Johnson's, like, wearing, like, kind of Jimi Hendrix-y stuff, and Steve mm -hmm. Vai's always had, like, this total rock star image and stuff, Steve Morris just looks so, like, normal, you know? And so mm -hmm. he didn't fit my my imagination of, a, like, what a rock star looks like. And the article started off, like, more aggressive than Eric Johnson, more musically spacious than Joe Satriani, more... I don't remember oh, what so it was. Oh, comparisons! I, I know, I know. And more something or other than Steve Vai. So at this point, these were the three guitar players who I most liked. So I immediately was, like, annoyed by this yeah. article. And I remember bringing it to my dad and being like, look at this bullshit! <laughs> and he was like, and he was like, do you know who Steve Morris is? And I was like, Pfft. You know, I don't need to know. <laughs> and oh he was like, no, I mean, like, he's amazing. And so, um, and he was going to be playing at Stanford uh, near where I lived. And so my dad took me to the show. And I remember watching it and just being dumbfounded. Like, and immediately going out and buying, like, mm -hmm. all of the albums, all mm -hmm. the Dregs albums and everything. And then going to my guitar teacher. At that point, I'd been taking, I don't know, I'd taken maybe four guitar lessons. And going to Sam... My, my guitar teacher and say, Can I want to learn a Steve Moore song. I want to learn too many notes. Oh, that's boy. what I asked to learn. Again, and we both uh, kind of exactly. went in with tall orders, huh? And bless Sam, he totally didn't laugh at me. He was just like, Okay. And I remember going downstairs and he like tabbed out the first bit for me. And I'm really, 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 really slow. And he totally like showed it to me. And then I worked on it for the next decade and yeah. I still can't play it. And then Jeff Beck when oh, I discovered yeah. Jeff Beck. And I discovered Jeff Beck like in, in reverse. It was because both Eric Johnson and, and Steve Morris talked about him mm -hmm. being one of their influences. So That's a, always a really good way to like kind of yeah. discover where you came from. 
you know? Yeah, I remember my first Jeff Beck show, like, having, trying to remind myself, like, Gretchen, there's no crying at rock shows. Those are the only, like, the most essentials, but, you know. Because, of course, Andy Timmons, Greg Howe, like, Yeah, I know, that's the thing, it it's just like, I, you know, you don't name people and then people are like, what about blah blah blah, well, yeah, I love a lot of people and it's right. just kind of, ow! But what she, are you she, doing? She's snuggling too hard. That's okay. Forgive oh. her. Yeah, look at anyway, this. um, should <laughs> I know they're, they're way too distracting. Should we move on to the uh, the less obvious? Are there ways in which your influences have inspired you beyond just fingers on a fretboard? The ones that I've mentioned, yeah. Or any any of them. Well, okay. So I'll say this as far as um, specifically answering to your point. Um, I'm lucky in the sense that I've gotten to meet a lot of my heroes, and I think there's a lot of people who, who say, you know, I don't want to meet some of my heroes because I don't want to discover that they might be not such great people and it would burst the bubble, and I totally understand that, um, but I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is, maybe it's just coincidence, but I'm very happy to say that, like, the influences of mine who I, who I know and I'm, like, privileged enough to call friends are really amazing people that aren't completely inspirational on more than one level. I mean, I remember growing up and being like the only little girl at like any yeah. kind of show that I... Any guitar yeah, geeky show. That I was even able to go to right. if, if I was under 18 or 21. But I was, you know, lucky enough to be able to attend some sound checks and that was the way that I was going to see the members. <laughs> see the members. <laughs> When Guthrie be first became really popular, mm -hmm. I think it was pretty easy to be able to tell that he's just a normal dude that likes playing guitar, you know, and he... A normal, freakishly good well, guitar player. <laughs> yeah, no, I, you, but you know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. he, I think you said it best that, like, he is as well-respected and popular as he is for no other reason other than pure merit. And I think it's just really cool because it means that young kids have a really good mo role model with someone like him because he's just a guy, you know? He's not like telling kids to do drugs because it's rock and roll and it's cool, you know? It's just like kids have someone pure who's doing this for the love of, m of the music and is famous for no other reason and they have someone like that to look up to. Mm -hmm. And I think you can say the same about Andy mm -hmm. and about Greg and I've always loved that about all of them that they just have these like normal lives where they work hard and they're musicians first and everything else second and I've always loved that. So that that has inspired me. You yeah. know, they're nice people and and actually I just recently saw Greg do a clinic and you know it's not the first time. But what was really funny is uh, I don't know if you know this, it's it's public already so I feel like I can say this, but um, Greg was mentioning that he has just recently replaced Andy in Simon Phillips's band. Oh, really? And I've gotten to see that band like many times and I've always like been like so grateful to Simon because it's like because of you I get to see Andy really often come to my to where I live and now it's the same with Greg. It's like thanks to you all my favorite guitar players are coming to visit all the time. Mm -hmm. But what was really cool is Greg was making the announcement that that you know he's going to be playing with Simon and he was like, you know, I'm replacing Andy Timmons and those are such huge shoes to fill and, you know, I really love his playing. And just hearing two guys on such a high caliber talk about each other, mm -hmm. like, oh my god, I have such huge shoes to fill and I'm such a fan of yours, mm -hmm. like, that's such a great example of why they're inspiring. Because right. they really think like that. I have a theory, and there are obvious exceptions, but who we are becomes how we play. Yeah, I, I've, I've always thought so too. And I, I often tell my students or people who are like asking for advice, it's like, yeah, practice your instrument, you know, do all the things that everybody tells you to do. But for a couple of reasons, focus on being a good mm -hmm. person and a person with integrity. People don't say that enough. Right. And, and one of the reasons is obvious, which is like, if you're a pain in the ass to be around, nobody wants to be in a van with you or a tour bus. Like, yeah. like the person with the good attitude and adequate chops gets the gig every day over the person with mad chops and a shitty attitude. But also, for the, um, for, for the art that you're going to create, you know? People who are yeah. megalomaniacs generally play like megalomaniacs. Mm -hmm. The things that I've taken away from some of my heroes that aren't specifically the notes or the way they play or anything like that is 
like I love that Jeff Beck has always totally followed his own kind of creative path. Mm -hmm. Like he hasn't done the stuff necessarily that's the easy, you know, the, the more obvious choices. Like he's done things because he's wanted to do them. And he reinvents himself all the time. And he doesn't really explain or apologize for anything. He just yeah. does his thing. Jeff Beck's created his own ball game. Mm -hmm. Nobody sounds like him, so right. in a way you don't compare him to anybody because why? He's in his own league. Hey there. Steve Morris is just such a stellar human being. Like, he's so smart. He's so positive. He's so generous. Like, if you read any of the columns he wrote, he had a column called Open Ears, and it was, like, advice, like, like real-world practical advice. Mm -hmm. Or if you've ever been to a clinic or gotten to talk to him, he's so grounded. He's so practical. He's so clearly in love with music and also has a very grounded approach to life. Mm -hmm. um, and he said something, um, our buddy Jude Gold has a podcast called oh, No great. Guitar Is Safe. Which you were just on. I was just on it. I was like so totally honored. And actually, it was a good lesson in being interviewed by a good friend because oh, yeah. boy was I unfiltered. Like, and she oh, left no. some stuff on there that I was like, oh, I need oh to, I, I still need to hear it. <laughs> I haven't gotten a chance to yet. It, it got me my, my second explicit rating on Amps and Axes. Yes. I also got an explicit rating. Nice. Um, but, uh, but at the end of the Steve Morris uh, podcast with Jude, he said the most beautiful thing. And he was saying, that one of the things he believes is that anybody who has a platform, a microphone, or some some vo some way where their voice is heard by a larger group of people, even if it's a modest group of people, that there's that you have a personal responsibility to really be mindful about what you put out into the world. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That needs to be said. It was so beautiful. I mean, it was truly. Ah! Ow! Oh. Okay, so Francis has emotional problems. <laughs> Just bit me. I've never been bitten by a cat. I've been bitten by a dog. It's really, it's awful and it's embarrassing and she's in timeout now. Oh, she were bleeding, honey. Uh, a little bit. It's okay. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Alright, tell me uh, one thing that inspires you or influences you, whether it's somebody or something mm -hmm. that people wouldn't expect that might be different for music. I should have thought of my answer first. Um, a lot of stuff that I read inspires me. Well, I mean, that's... Obviously, I just did an album that's a concept album. Right. And actually, even before Mike Melinda approached me with the concept, I was already thinking of trying to fuse literature or something mm -hmm. with it, like mm -hmm. write music that would go along with some program. Okay, so. so name one book, and not Dante's Inferno, because yeah. that's too obvious, yeah. but uh, give me one book that inspires you musically, but it's like a novel or... Well, okay, I can tell you what I was thinking of, okay. and actually what I'm, I, I've read a million times is I love Macbeth. Okay. So. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. What about you? Okay, totally out of left field, right? Yeah. It has nothing to do with music, and though, of course, I think I think probably all artists... Wait, maybe I know. I know. Well, tell me, tell me. I don't think it's what you're thinking. It's um, not? It Should I say what I'm thinking to see how well I sure. know you? Is it um, uh, uh, gymnastics? Yeah. <laughs> see, I know this girl! I, I know it! No, I know! I thought you were okay, going to say The Lion funny. King, which is, like, super obvious. Um, no, I mean, like, uh, I was going to say that I think all artists are, like, influenced by other art. You know, it's, like, pretty hard not to... It's hard to go to a museum and, and not be inspired, mm -hmm. you know, if, if the art is moving and all that. Mm -hmm. I guess that depends on what uh, what show what's, what's showing, right? But mm -hmm. um, no, for me, like a lot of people like ask me what the deal with the gymnastics is because I it's love like it. it's so different, and you know, I think a lot of times it's like really young girls that are into that. But um, for me, it's just like it's a specific thing. Like I mean, I think you know the Olympics happen every four years, and I think most people get pretty inspired by that or mm -hmm. motivated. But for me, it's just like, um, you know, other than the fact that they perform death-defying moves that everybody's just kind of like, that's incredible physically, I think that like, any performer in any medium or any anything that they do kind of understands how hard the mental game is mm. and how much that's so much harder than any skill that you do because like not to psych yourself out when you're playing guitar live is way harder than what whatever the lick might be mm -hmm. right and no matter how many times you've done it at home it always feels different mm -hmm. and you know I think everybody's encountered that mm -hmm. and that's the hardest part and so to me what's really amazing about those girls especially that they're so young is that they have to be masters of that Mm -hmm. And that's already so much harder than the death-defying moves that they do. That's, like, really amazing. And 
Plus, they have this amazing work ethic when they're 15, 16, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's incredible. And I think that's, you know, because they're so well known, mm -hmm. um, way more well known than anything that we may yeah. do in our lifetimes. Right. And they're really young. Like, talk about personal responsibility. Yeah, you know kidding. what I mean? Like, they're so public. And I think they're really good role models for, you know, that's beautiful. really young I kids. And I, I love it. I mean, I just think it's super motivating because their lives are, are about pretty, you know, hard work and, and pure things, and it's like, mm -hmm. how can you not be inspired Did by that? Did you ever do gymnastics? No, I wish I had. Yeah. I really want to, like, learn some tumbling and all that. Like, I'm going to do it at some point, but I'm just scared that, like, something's, you know, oh, it's yeah. like, probably, yeah. yeah. All right, uh, Doroka Premenik, I hope I'm uh, pronouncing that right, asks, what other types of music do you guys like apart from guitar-driven music that might surprise people? You wanna go first? All right, um, okay, I don't know if this is gonna surprise, are you know the <laughs> answer to these two, we know each other so well. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is gonna surprise people. I mean, I do have a, f a few. Yeah. Um, boy bands, 90s boy bands. Backstreet Boys being at the top of the list. My dream gig, by the way, if you're out there. Um, <laughs> you should hire her. She's amazing. <laughs> and she uh, is fun to hang with. Oh, good. Thanks. <laughs> I tried so hard. Anyway, um, um, film scores, not necessarily famous ones or not necessarily ones that people um, may think. It's just kind of like, I mean, I grew up watching movies and TV and just like whatever hits my ears and I think it sounds pleasant. I, I think I just draw a lot of stuff from that that I you know, not necessarily even remember, but just, it all comes to me. Uh, Middle Eastern music, both, like, of the pop persuasion that I grew up with, and, you know, Turkish music. And... This, this is very real. Stop shitting. This is very real. <laughs> this is up close and personal. <laughs> Coming to you live. From Francis's dump. <laughs> I love um, composed music, so, uh, Baroque, Classical, romantic, 20th century. Um, I mean, it's kind of ridiculous to be like, I really like Mozart. It's like, well, yeah, I really like something that's good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I do really like Mozart. Uh, what are some of your favorite albums that influenced you? Mm. Wanna go? Sure. Um, I mean, I guess I already said extreme, but Pornography is my favorite album of all time. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. We're just gonna say one? Oh, I mean, I could, I could go on. I'm just trying many, to be conservative here. How many? Okay, let's say three. 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 The first three that come to your mind. Okay, so that one. Uh, Steve Stevens, Flamenco Gogo, -Go, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Um, it's like, like, flamenco and electronica and pop and instrumental and vocal and like all these things. It's really amazing and super underrated, really musical. Uh, and uh, Extraction, Greg Howe. Oh, okay, awesome. Well, Greg Howe, Victor Wooten, and Dennis Chambers. Cool. Oh. Steve Moore's High Tension Wires. Mm, that's a good one. That's oh, such a good one. Um, Jeff Beck, Guitar Shop, probably. That one? Okay. I, yeah. I, I would have been... Which one would you have said? Blow by Blow? I, I like that one too. You know, it's hard to pick a Jeff Beck album. Yeah. And then I'd say uh, Django Reinhardt, Stephen Grappelli Quintet of the Hot Club of France. Nice. This is for Gretchen. How difficult is it, after covering Jimmy Page so incredibly well and for so long, to compete, uh, to completely separate yourself from that when doing your own music. I hear little to no page in what you do in your own creations, and I find that in itself to be amazing, among so many other things. Oh, that's from Bob Schoolcraft, yeah, too. Yeah, oh. Bob. Bob, you're awesome, and he's the guy who started the Zepparella official fan page on Facebook, and he's awesome. A great guitar player himself. Uh, well, thank you. That's a very nice question. Um, I think... I never... I never have consciously tried to sound like or unlike anybody. I think probably if I don't sound like Jimmy Page, maybe it's just because of how many other influences get in there as well. Excuse me. Actually, you know what, I, I should say on my latest album I did do the, the second to the last track, Beast, I did intentionally kind of do some nods to Jimmy on that. Cool. Um, should we go to us asking questions? Okay, yeah. All right, so we got a question for you now. Our question for this episode is, who are your non-obvious influences slash inspirations? Whether it be a musician, a teacher, you know, family member, friend, uh, or maybe another uh, artist or different medium or different art outside of music? Love to hear what you 
Yeah, leave your um, leave your responses in the comments below or tag us on Facebook, um, and we would love to hear what you guys think. So thanks for watching, and join us next time on the next episode of Muses and Musings with Gretchen Men, and I'm Neely Brosh, and we'll see you next time. Ferdinand. And Ferdinand says bye. <laughs> ah, you're so cute. Aww. He didn't get a timeout because he was behaving well. I know, he doesn't ever need a timeout. He's no. just a He didn't snuggle. bite me like the other one. Frances has problems. No, she I love really her does. though. She, she has fine. problems, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm always getting the explicit ratings. <laughs> oh shit. See? Duh. I'll just hear the camera. I think it might have been over there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>